Hey, brothers and sisters, Aaron Clark here with Spirit and Truth Christian Church Ministries, here to talk to you today about marriage. That's right, that wonderful union between a man and a woman. And I'm going to share with you over the next seven weeks, at least, the some of the points from a book I'm writing called Killing the Canker Worm of Marriage. And just to give you a little bit of background of where this all began, I've been married a little more than 24 years now, but in my seventh year of marriage, we were engaged with a couple that we knew, loved, respected. They were of a sorts models for what we call the perfect marriage. And we really looked up to them and we looked up and they divorced. And it was so shocking and it, it struck terror in my heart because I couldn't imagine after 22 years of being married to just throw in the towel. So we started to investigate and, and ask questions all around the country and, and we put out, actually put out messages saying, hey, we want to know more. And we actually found out a couple, the longest term marriage that divorced 56 years and then divorced. And the question that made me ask was, at, seven, at that, that time, seven years of marriage, was there something in my, our marriage that could be working that eventually could end in divorce? and thus was birthed the idea of a canker worm. And that's basically you have this beautiful piece of fruit, looks so beautiful on the outside, but down working down on the inside is this worm just deteriorating the core of what holds this thing together. And you bite and you bite and you bite and it's sweet and then you look up, you take that one bite and bang, there's a worm and it's disgusting and you wanna throw the whole thing away. And so today basically what I'm gonna to talk to you about is the seven symptoms that a canker worm is working in your marriage. And the first big issue that we had to deal with in destroying this worm. So the seven symptoms were, first, the flame of your intimacy was either low, fading away, or altogether gone. That means that the emotional connection, the spiritual connection, the physical shows of affection, gratitude, courtesy, that these things were low, fading, or altogether gone. Number two, you have things you want to talk about, but you fear talking about them because you've gone there so many times, but it just ends up being like, I just don't even want to go there. It, that's how you know a canker worm is working. Number three, the confidence that you'll be understood and heard, heard and understood, is almost gone. You know, and you know that by hearing things like, you know what, you never listen. I, you know what, I'm, I'm not even going to say it again because you're not going to hear what I'm saying. You Or you don't get it. You don't understand me. That's the symptom of a canker worm. Um, number four would be you feel like you're going through a cycle. I know me and Pam said that. You know what, we, we've been here a thousand times. We keep going through the same thing. It's up and down and up and down and up and down. You feel like you're on a roller coaster. That's the symptom that a canker worm is working. You have conflicts, number five, you have conflicts that you feel never get resolved. It's like no matter how long you talk about it, no matter how much you get counseled, you just feel like no matter what we do, this thing will not go away. We, we just cannot see eye to eye on it. That's a canker worm. Number six, there's this nagging tension. It's just, it's, just, it's just tight. And you can't get it to go away. You live through it, you, you accept it, but it's, it's a tension you know shouldn't be there. It's not right. That's the symptom that a canker worm is eating. And the last symptom that a canker worm could be eating is the only time you touch is for sex. That's not good. So one of the big things, the, big, the first big thing that we're going to deal with today is <laughs> the issue of falling in love. And this may sound really quirky, but I'm gonna tell you something. What we found out as we started to peel back the layers and deal with this worm in our own marriage, the first big thing that we dealt with was we, didn't, we, never, we never fell in love with each other. It was all an illusion. We were actually in love with the idea of being in love. And then what happened was we got married. Once we got married, then the reality of who we married came crashing in on the idea of who we wanted to be married to. 
See, it was all fun in the beginning. We were dating, we were holding hands, we were talking till four o'clock in the morning. And we walked in the park and we laughed and we sang songs together. We shared our secrets and, and on and on. And it was so romantic. But little did we know that was just fanning, fanning the flames on this big fire of a lie that was in our hearts, mostly put there by an idea perpetuated by media, movies, and things like that. All these romance novels and all of this stuff. And we had this idea that finally I met the one who's going to fulfill my idea of love. And then you get married and you find out, man, your breath stank in the morning. <laughs> you find out, you know what, you leave stuff laying around. You know what, you can do some things that are actually pretty mean and evil. You have habits that I don't like. You're not as organized as I thought you might. I mean, so all of these different things come to surface and then you have this temptation to say, I thought I loved you. And the reality is, is what me and Pam discovered. It's not I thought I loved you. I thought you were the one that I had in my mind and I never really even got to know you. So that's the first big thing, brothers and sisters. And I pray that as you hear these things, you, you look at, what is your resolve to love a person or are you still trying to make a person what you resolved to love? Because we said when we got married, for better or for worse, and if the worst is here and you saying I didn't sign up for this, then really your delusion has come to roost on your doorstep and you have to deal with that. So. We'll look at how do you, so how do I get from the point of I fell in love with an idea to a fiery, vibrant, intimate love where you want to be together all the time. You want to put the kids out. You want to turn the phones off. You want to close the blinds. You want to just steal away after 24 years of marriage. Do you know that that is real? You can have that, and we'll be talking about it. God bless you. Talk to you next week.